Great. Um, welcome to um, our panel discussion. We have something very special for you to hear for you today. Um, we are looking at how we can support and encourage the next generation of women technologists, and we have brought with us the next generation of women technologists. So we're super happy to introduce you to to some of the kids that we work with and some of the young adults that we're working with, um, and to tell you more about how we work with girls and young women. Um, and, and to really hear from them today, what we really wanted to give was an opportunity for them to have a voice and to share um, the kinds of things that they're interested in and the, and the kinds of things that they're doing and what makes them excited about tech. Um, so um, I'm just gonna do a quick intro um, to FireTech. So my name is Jill Hodges, I'm the CEO of FireTech. Um, and I'm here, my co-panel uh, co host is Ariel Horn. Ariel, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, uh, this is me. I am Ariel. I'm the lead fi uh, lead product manager at FireTech uh, and excited to be here and talking with the next generation of maybe product managers. Who knows? So back <laughs> over to you, Jill. Let's hear a little bit more about uh, what FireTech is and uh, how these wonderful roles are joining us today. Super. Um, can I please have the slides? Super. Okay, great. So I just want to tell you a little bit about FireTech. Um, we are the UK, one of the UK's leading providers of tech education for um, young people, and we work specifically with kids who are 8 to 17 years old. Um, and we have a very special approach to um, teaching them about technology because we really believe that kids need to get hands on with tech. Um, and we want them to create, communicate and problem solve empowered with tech skills. So that means that we are working with young people on projects, we're working with them on creative projects, we're working with them to solve problems that are important to them, or whether that's a global problem or a problem just between their friends group, and really giving them the tools to do that and in a way that they can share and that they can be really proud of and they can continue working on beyond our course. Um, and we work with thousands of kids every year. Um, we've worked with over 80,000 kids over the course of our lifetime over the past seven years as a company. Um, and this is all we do is tech uh, writ large. So it's not just coding. We also do robotics, AI. Um, we have kids building VR worlds from nine years old, as well as doing coding um, and video game design and some of the more classic things in the coding space. Um, and we work with kids on different kinds of courses. So they can take a course that is a week long during their holidays. They can take an after school class or they can do a one hour experience. And we're doing things, we look for themes that are really exciting for the kids. So things like uh, making multiplayer games with Roblox, learning about machine learning, um, teenagers who are looking at um, AI and you know with a bit of Python or a bit of TensorFlow, um, but also experiences like you know how do you make a live stream? So lots of kids are excited about video games; they want to make live streams. Um, how do you set that up? And how, what are these tools? So it's not only sort of um, very serious coding tools and things; it's also all the kinds of tools that kids want to be able to use um, to do the kinds of things they're interested in do, doing and to communicate the things they want to communicate and the tools that they might not be getting at school. Um, so that's what we do as a company. And in the process of doing that, we're working with thousands and tens of thousands of young people. Um, so, I, so I can take the slides off and go back to the panel and introduce our panel. Um, so it, today we've brought with us three girls from year five who recently did some courses with us. And we've also got two young adults who will be part of our panel in a few minutes. Um, but Holly, Isabella, and Lily, could you please uh, introduce yourselves and tell us where you're calling in from? How about you, Holly? Um, I'm Holly and I come from UK, um, from Fairham. Fantastic. How about you, Isabella? Uh, my name's from the UK. And Lily, what about you? I'm Lily and I'm calling from London. Well, let's jump right on into it. Okay, so what course did we take at FireTech uh, most recently? Holly, what were you doing the other week that you thought was pretty cool? I was doing making games with Roblox. Can you, what is a roadblock? Can you tell me what a Roblox is? Um, well, it's basically where you can make games. Cool, okay. Um, and what about you, Lily? I was also doing making multiplayer games with Roblox. Okay, Isabel? Um, I did Minecraft Maker. 
Ah, okay. So everybody was in a creative building stuff sort of mood, it seems like. So what um, multiplayer uh, Roblox, what sort of stuff were you building in that class, Ali? Well, I made two games, um, an obstacle course, an obby, um, they're the same thing, and a PvP, which is, I made it a King of the Hill, and then I also made a dodgeball game. Very cool. Did you know what you were going to build when you went into the class? Nope. Yeah. Passion just struck while you were in it, new creative ideas. Okay. And what about you, Holly, when, when you did your course? Um, I was making an obby and I also made a racing game. Um, when I went into the course, I kind of knew what I was doing with an, like, I was going to do an obby because I had played a obby before and I kind of had an idea of what I was going to do. Okay. Isabella, for Minecraft, did you kind of know what you were doing before the game or did you jump into it ready to explore? Well... I didn't really know what I was going to specifically do in that course. Like, I've done another Minecraft course before, but they were completely different. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. So I sort of did something I've done before, but recreated it better. Okay. So all of these were pretty, um, pretty creative. And it sounds like you had an idea of, you know, at least the topic of what you were going to do when you were going into it. Did you get to build what you wanted to build by the end? Okay, cool. So moving on, what do you think the next thing is that you're going to build? Is it going to be in Minecraft? Is it going to be in Roblox? Or is it going to expand? Um, I'm going to do Minecraft and I'm hoping to attempt to do something like very big, try and put all my hard work into it and make it look very cool. Uh, yeah, what about you, Lily? Um, well, in Roblox, I think I'm going to do Roblox, but in Roblox when I play it, not when I make it, when I play it, I usually play Adopt Me or Royal High, which are games where you can play with your friends and sort of Royal High is like school, but it's virtual and Adopt Me is where you raise your pets and you just trade. So, I, and since you can get scammed really easily on both, maybe I would make like a combination of them, but maybe make like a protection thing that would block scammers. Mm, what about you, Isabella? And maybe try and do another Minecraft course or something. Thing like that. So this is all pretty creative. Is this something that you think you could see yourself doing in the future? As a maybe as a career or as a job or maybe just learning a bit more about it? Um, I think I would do it like just for a hobby um so i don't do it all the time just like when i have spare time i'll hop on and start working on something what is it about kind of minecraft or roblox that's exciting for you or inspiring um I just feel like it's, I don't know, it's just like fun to do or something.
Okay. I'm going to pass it over to Jill. I know she had a couple other questions. Uh, sorry about that. So um, for Lily, Holly, and um, Isabella, how many girls versus boys were in your class, and how did you find that environment? Well, I was the only girl. And how, did, how was that? Well, was that okay, I or was that a, that, an issue? That was okay. I, I didn't really mind. Yeah. And how about Holly and Isabella? Um, um, there were four girls and four boys, but I found the girls like they were very new to playing the game. So uh -huh. that's why they decided to take the course, so they wanted to learn. Uh -huh. cool. um, in my class, I, would, I thought there was mostly going to be boys, but when I went into my class, there was a, two girls there um, with mm -hmm. me. So it made it more fun because there's people like me because they're girls in my class. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And so, and so you were able to make friends in your class? Did you guys all make friends in your class? A little bit, <laughs> maybe a little bit harder for you, Lily. And, um, and and when you think about doing this stuff, when you think about doing these kinds of courses or doing this stuff with, with your hobbies and stuff, like like um, you know, how do you uh, do? You, do you have friends who are in this into these kinds of things, or do you come to these classes to find the friends who are into this? Like, do you have a social group around this, or do you think your friends would like to do this? Your friends from school. Um. Well, most of my friends. Well, not most, but say half of the kids in my year um, like playing Roblox. And so uh -huh. on Roblox, there's this feature called friend. And I've friended all of the friends who play Roblox uh -huh. and my friends. And I can join their games and play with them. And did they think it was neat that you were actually building games? Um, yes, because I showed my friends one of them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Isabella? Um, when I find not many of my friends really like uh, Minecraft, it's mainly just the boys. Uh -huh. So I'd find yeah. they'd probably try and do them like Roblox courses more than the Minecraft because almost so all the, the people. So more of the girls like Roblox than Minecraft. Interesting. Yes. Uh -huh. Almost everyone in our class actually plays Roblox. Very few uh -huh. people turn. Oh, so, so why do you think the girls like Roblox better than Minecraft? I'm not actually sure. <laughs> okay. And how about you, Holly? Do you have friends who like this kind of stuff? Would they? Would you bring them into this kind of thing? Or in your spare time with your friends, would you play this kind of stuff? Or build this kind of stuff? Well, mostly in my class, when it's about video games, all the boys are talking about it and they're usually all about different games and when it when it's come up like when girls talk about it it's all about roblox mm -hmm. so really they just like playing roblox because of the girl games on there and um my friend is not like familiar with games so she didn't really play games a lot so she doesn't really know a lot about games so she won't really be interested yeah okay and um and so when you think about um you know getting your friends interested in technology when you think about sort of building this stuff and creating things and 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 um and sharing these things with your friends like do you think that your friends realize that that the technology can be really creative and fun to build stuff or or do you think they don't really get that Isabella. Pardon? So, so, so do you think, do you, I mean, you, you guys seem to have a good time like creating things and building things and having it be really creative. And do you think your friends get that or do you think they don't know that? Um, well, I guess some of them will get it and they'd probably maybe enjoy it themselves. Like, some of them haven't actually played mm -hmm. Minecraft, so if they actually try playing it, though, they might enjoy it. Like how like everything's mm -hmm. based and how it's laid out, mm -hmm. and maybe cool features which you can make. Like I've made a timer in Minecraft mm -hmm. when normally there isn't. Mm -hmm. 
Great. That's really cool. And and like Lily, what do you think that what could you do that would like bring more of your girlfriends into being interested in this kind of thing? Or what could we do? Um well I think that some of my friends just don't like playing video games because they think it's all about like killing. But I think if they were shown Roblox, they would maybe change their minds about that because in Roblox, you don't always have to kill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Holly? How do you how do you get your friends interested in building things with you and creating things with you? And not only the play inside, but also the building side. Um, well, usually when I tell my friends about games and like how I create things, they usually, um, like when I, if I tell them I like it, they will probably like it as well because my friends are quite similar to me. So if they maybe try it, we could, because when I, with friends, we always like to do things together. So if mm -hmm. I showed her like what I do, and like how I create games, and we could like think of an idea to play together and mm -hmm. make something fun. Cool. Great. Um, Ariel, do you have any other questions? Well, I'm just kind of wondering what, um, when you play these games, do you want to build cool stuff for you? Or are you interested in building cool stuff for you to play with friends and with other people? I think that would be interesting to know. Well, I'm interested in making games for both me and other people because I think that if I can make a cool game for me, then that's a good thing. But if I can also make it cool for other people, then that's an even better thing because then I can enjoy it with other people. Okay. And and what about on uh, on Minecraft, Isabella? Are you gonna create a server and invite everybody over or um, what do you do yeah i find that some of my builds people might like enjoy, enjoy like lots of people do parkour or mazes and i've actually built some of those so i think people might like them but then there are also things that i might only like which i've built like i like to build a lot of modern houses and give them interior design and that sort of things Amazing. All right. Well, I think that's my last round of questions for um, Holly, Isabella, and Lily. Jill, do you have any more? No, I think that's that. I mean, I think what um, what I really hear you guys saying, and it'd be great to sort of get your feedback if we've got this right or wrong, is that um, you know you have an interest in building something, you have an interest in doing something creative, you have an interest in building something that you can share with your friends, um, and that that social piece of it is interesting. Like how how you can do these things with your friends is interesting, and then how you can sort of um, uh, you know take an interest that you have around playing this stuff and then build on that interest to create stuff and sort of get more get more skills so that you can do um, more advanced, you know, whether it's the timers and, you know, life bars and things like that. Um, you want to get those skills so that you can sort of push those interests further. That's what I've kind of heard you guys say. And is that, is that correct? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Feel free to jump in if there's anything else you want to add to that. Yeah. Is anything that good? Anything that we should be doing to get your friends more interested in tech, make them think video games are cool or anything like that? Um, well, maybe you could like uh, make a thing for like girls and like base it on one thing like making a castle on Roblox and maybe they might find that fun. So maybe they'll join the course and maybe enjoy it. Great. Will or Isabella, do you have any ideas? I'm not sure, but I don't really know what my friends would probably do with when they do video games. Like I know one of them, she doesn't really, she used to play Minecraft, but she wasn't really sure what to do. She just like build random things. So it's really, they're really unpredictable, my friends. 
<laughs> well, um, like what Holly said, you could make um, a course for just girls and then they can make friends and maybe like make games together. And then if they see that it's really fun to make the games, maybe they'll start making more games and find out that they actually really like video games. Great. Okay, that's perfect. Well, thanks girls. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for sharing your opinions. We really, really appreciate hearing it directly from you, what you're doing, what's exciting, what you enjoy, what's maybe you know a, a little more challenging, how you get your friends involved. So we really want to thank you guys for joining us. And um, you can you you can drop off the panel whenever you feel like it. Um, and we are going to move our attention over to the um, young adult panel. Thank you so much for having us. Thank You're you. You're super welcome. Bye. Thank you. See you later. Bye, Bye. Bye, Holly. Bye, Lily. Great. Um, so now we have our young adult panel. Um, and can you guys please introduce yourselves? You go ahead, Sada. So my name is Salda. I am a software engineer. I am also a computer science graduate. So I graduated uh, July 2020. I studied computer science with a year in industry. So that means that in my third year, I actually worked as a versus studying. Then I came to, I, I returned back to uni my fourth year to complete my degree. And um, I'm also a fire tech uh, tutor as well. A very good fire tech tutor. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> How about Zoe? Um, hi, I'm Zoe. I'm a second year uh, university student at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. Uh, I actually attended FireTech camp when it first started, and I also taught artificial intem intelligence seminars last year. Um, yeah, I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I work in space exploration. So last summer I built, oh, I was working on building a rover that's going to be sent to the moon next year. And this upcoming summer, I'm going to be working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Amazing, super amazing, and uh, and Zoe, despite her accent, grew up in London. So she's um, she grew up in London, and now she's gone off to university in the states for a few years. So super. So um, so we just really wanted to explore with you guys some of those same themes about sort of being a woman in tech, in tech, um, and you know the girls we were just talking to are just starting their journeys and just starting to explore things and doing that through play and doing that through creativity. And so we just wanted to talk to you guys about some of those th same kind of themes about how you got started, um, where you see yourselves going, um, what kinds of things are helpful for you, what kinds of things you, things you see as roadblocks um, as you're con contemplating and sort of really starting your careers in, in tech fields. Um, so um, let me pass over to you, Ariel. Do you want to start the, yeah. the questions? Yeah, I, I think we, we take it right back. So we talk to young girls that are just getting, just finding out why tech is interesting. Um, can you kind of talk us through how you identified this as a path that possibility? You know, how, how did we even get started on this path? Why don't we go to uh, Zoe first, yeah? Yeah, um, there's a lot of trial and error. Um, I used to want to be a doctor, but then I didn't like needles. And then I heard about biomedical engineers. So then I wanted to be a biomedical engineer. And then when I was in year 12, so after I, yeah, so I only had one more year of school left. I did um, an, a work experience with a biomedical engineering company and then found out I didn't want to be a biomedical engineer because I didn't like it that much. Um, but I definitely still want to do engineering because I liked math and physics. Um, and so, yeah, I applied for mechanical engineering because it was broad in general. And then my first year of university, I randomly got into space exploration. So, yep, here we are. Okay, so kind of, you know, started one direction and then really sort of iterated in another direction. So Sada, what about you? Was that path more linear or kind of similar sort of iterations? I think after a point it was quite linear, but I actually started my whole kind of tech journey in school by chance. So I took computer science on a whim, not really expecting to 
love it or, or, or like it at the, in the slightest. So at the time uh, in my school, GCSE computer science was new um, and I didn't really want to do something that was new and kind of like I didn't know how to kind of put it in my life plan because at the time I wanted to be a dentist and become a dental surgeon. I was quite interested in teeth because um, I had braces at the time. So I had, a, I had a life plan, I was set, and I was like, okay, this computer science thing just sounds strange, none of my business, but my teachers are really kind of evangelizing for us to do it. Um, my teachers got into contact with my parents, we had this like, option even thing, they also started to tell me to do it. So part of me was uh, decided to just do it, to get people off my back, because my plan was to, <laughs> my plan was to start doing it, and then by December of, the, of year 10, um, you could like drop and change your DCC. So I was like, let me just do it. And then by then I could like change and lo and behold, I never looked back. I fell in love. How cliche, but I fell in love when I never looked back. Did the GCC, then the A-level and the degree. Now I'm working in tech. Maybe I'll do a master's one day. Um, so from then on out, I was just like, this is amazing. But in the beginning, I, I really just took computer science on a whim. Interesting. And like, it sounds as well that, you know, there were conversations around, you know, n not necessarily not tech, but um, interestingly enough, both of you kind of in the medical side of things. Um, that's quite, quite kind of similar between the two of you. Have you found that you've met other women or people in your career so far that kind of similarly they didn't start knowing that it was going to be tech it, it was starting somewhere else and then it kind of moved to be a more technical role within it yeah so um some of my friends actually two of my friends at least in my at university they actually studied a levels to go into more medical related uh, fields and then long story short they didn't <laughs> and they ended up doing computer science with me and my other friends um so yeah i do find that's actually quite common that a lot of well a lot of the women i know were kind of going down the stereotypical science route because i think there's this thing of oh if you're good at sciences and good at maths then this is what's for you like like the medical route is for you and that's what you should go and pursue which is not necessarily a problem but it may you may not necessarily hear about going to study computer science or the tech industry as a whole um so yeah, I can, I can definitely think of a few people that were like that. Don't know about you, Zoe? Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that uh, as someone who basically went through that. Um, and I still see it now. Um, I My mechanical engineering degree is very much split 50-50 boys, girls, but that's because all the girls if at my university, if you wanna do biomedical engineering, you have to pair it up with another kind of engineering. And most of the girls in my engineering field Pair it up with biomedical engineering, and like, yeah, most of the guys pair it up with business or like electronics and robotics. Going to pass it over to Jill. Yeah. So, so how important is it for you um, to have role models? There, there's kind of an accepted idea. Um, that we need to have lots of role models for girls and young women to see um, to see other women who've kind of broken the ground before them. Do you find that you um, that you are looking for role models, or you benefit from role models, or how do you think about sort of having those role models? How about you, Sada? Um, so I can see the value in having role models. I wouldn't say that they're useless, but personally, I never really had someone that I was going to be like in my life or my career. So I, like I said, I took computer science on the whim and I kind of followed this tech and I'm following this tech career and path without like knowing people who look like me, who are from a similar background as me to kind of aspire to. So I don't, I, I couldn't tell you that I have a role model. Um, I can tell you that I have people who are supporting me, some more of a support network to kind of encourage me on my way, but not like a, I want to be like them thing more. If anything, I, I take, positive attributes of people around me and then I try and put that and um, implement that in my in my life my career um, mm -hmm. and then I rely very heavily on like my friends and family who have always like encouraged me to to pursue the things I love and to do well and to pick me up when I'm you know maybe a bit low 
And uh, yeah, I think more of a support network than a particular specific role model for me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really interesting. And Zoe, um, how do you feel about the role models and the support network? Um, well, kind of like Sada, I don't really have a role model who's like me, but there's definitely people that I work with that I want to be more like. Um, so like, well, my boss, he's a lot older than me, but he's done a lot of really cool things from working on self-driving cars to working in space exploration to being a marine <laughs> to cleaning up Chernobyl. So like just a huge wide range of things. And like, I definitely aspire to be someone who like has all those achievements and like really pushes the boundaries when everyone thinks it's impossible. Like there's no like limit. Um, and like kind of differently to Sada though, I feel like my support network definitely follows whatever I do. So for example, when I first joined, um, like when I first got interested in space, um, I heard about it through a friend and he was like, oh, like Zoe, check out this cool thing I'm doing. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just join and it'll be fun. And then I told my other friends what I was doing and they're like, oh, well, that sounds fun too. Like I'll join. So I don't go into things like knowing that I'll have friends there. I just kind of figure that I'll find the people there because if they're interested in the same thing, then we'll definitely like have a bonding point and like form some kind of connection. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, just, that passion brings people together? And would you say that, would you say that that passion is more or less important than knowing there are opportunities for you uh, in these future roles? So that idea of support versus knowing that somebody has already broken ground on something. I think they're both valuable. Um, opportunity, I mean, my passion wasn't for space when I first started this. Um, my passion was more just being curious and like wanting to try new things. Um, and I'm lucky enough to be in a place where but that's the same for most people. Um, and, but knowing that there's opportunity, like I would have jumped into anything. So that's definitely like keeping me going too. So. Yeah, I'd agree that they're both valuable, but I think as I was progressing through you know, school, university work, etc., I didn't, I wasn't always aware of the opportunity. I just did something that was interesting. And like I said, I took computer science and whim, ended up loving it in year 10, year 11. So it was a no brainer to continue it for the A-levels and it was a no brainer to continue it for the, for the degree. And I think it was more probably around my placement year that I had to start thinking, well, I'm working now. So I, I started to think more about, okay, what is out there in terms of opportunity and what, what do roles look like? Um, and I think one of the reasons why I like, or I love technology is that your role today may not be your role tomorrow or next year or the next 10 years. It's such an ever-changing industry. So um, I don't really hold too heavy the whole idea of, okay, I'm going to definitely go and do this. I have ideas and goals and plans and dreams, but I know that the landscape of technology is constantly changing. I think that's really exciting. So as of like, instead of me saying, okay, I'm going to do this exactly. I know, or I tell myself at least that there's opportunity out there that I can create for myself. Um, as long as I pursue something that I love and I keep on going and, you know, I'll create something for myself eventually. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I have just two more questions for you because we're going to um, be out of time pretty soon. Um, but what, one question was sort of um, slightly going back to the kind of idea around support networks and role models. And I, I just, both of you interestingly kind of said something different from what I think a lot of people would expect you to say about the role models in terms of saying that, you know, you, you, you haven't seen role models that um, really that you see yourself in or that, 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 or that sort of this idea of a role model is, um, is, you know, of, of needing female role models and, and needing somebody who's sort of, you can closely identify with that's close to your age and things like that may not be um, as important, but but it seemed to me like what you, um, the, thing, the thing that I heard from both of you is that you have people who are really believing in you. So whether that's in your personal support network or whether that's in your kind of career place, can you just, can you just say a couple words about, um, about how, how important it is to you um, to have that kind of um, support and relationship? Uh, a couple words. Uh, um, let, let's see how much I can say. Um, yeah, I think it's it's probably what the reason why I'm still here. Um, so in my placement year, I 
didn't really have the most pleasant of year. Most of my friends and family know that it wasn't great. Like I had not the best colleagues. Um, a long story short, it wasn't a great year, right? And I mm -hmm. think what kept me going, if anything, was A, me loving what I was doing and me wanting to learn and me having my goals, but B, knowing that I could talk to my friends and family about, about things and that they believed in me. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, for all the adversity that I experienced, maybe in my placement year or in my degree or wherever it is, I know that I can come home or I can pick up the phone nowadays because, you know, lockdown. And uh, I'll have my friends that kind of room for me. Like my mum said, uh, very funnily, she doesn't say this often, but when I told her that, oh yeah, mum, I got my degree, I got first. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, well, you're not, you're not celebrating, like you're not, you're not reacting the way I'm reacting. And she was like, yeah, because I knew you were going to do it kind of thing. Like I knew you were going to be fine. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's nice of you to say kind of thing. Um, and same sentiment with my friends, uh, my, my other friends and other family members that I rely on. Um, they, they definitely kept me going throughout everything. Um, I rely on them a lot and I love them for that. <laughs> Fantastic. That's so important. And how about you, Zoe, with your, uh, with your like mentor relationship? Yeah, it's definitely super important to have people. I think for me, at least people who like in power, who definitely believe in you. Um, I was a first year uni student, like I had no experience. Um, I'd taken like two math classes, no engineering classes yet. Like I just showed up and like gave, like had good attitude. And they basically like really took me under their wing and was like, yeah, like you're just as, like, your part is just as important as everyone else's part. And that is really like, it really makes an impression on you, especially when you're working alongside faculty and grad students and people who just have a lot more experience. Um, like they give you, giving people responsibility like shows them that they like, they believe in you. Um, so like I was on debatably like the youngest lunar dust research team in the world. I don't really know, I mean, we were two people and we were both teenagers um, leading meetings with Na like NASA veterans because we just had to find out like these weird properties like of lunar dust um and so like having like not only my boss believe in me like and give me the responsibility to lead a meeting with people who were so well respected in the community but then also having um like important employees at other space companies like set up this meeting and like put all this trust and like really believing that I wouldn't mess it up like they didn't even like have a run through or anything. They're just like, yeah, just show up on the day. Like, we trust you. It's fine. Like, we'll believe in you. Like, that's really important. And also having your friends believe in you because, like, they'll like understand that you're like, you're swamped with work. And like, my friends show up at my house with like brownies, like, if they know that it's like an intense week. And they're just like, yeah, like, you'll get through this. Like, it'll be fine. Just keep going. And yeah. Amazing. Great. Well, this is like so great. And they were sort of running out of time. So we're going to wrap up the panel part and just really want to thank you guys for sharing this and for telling us about your um, your experience and sort of how you got there. And I have one last question, which I think just like, again, like really sort of quick thing. What what do you think is going to happen uh, for you? How do you see your future as a woman, as a woman in engineering or technology? Do you, can you just like in two seconds, can you just wrap up for us how you see that going forward? And, and you know, how, you know, is there anything you need to be successful? I mean, Very simple question. No worries. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, after this summer, like I'm going to probably reflect, I feel like the summer is going to bring a lot of like experience and make me figure out what I want to do, whether that's like just mechanical engineering or more, more robotics focused. Um, but the only thing I really need is hard work. Like, that's it. And like, I feel like if I put in the work, things will, it'll pay off and I'll get to where I want to be. Super, how are you, Sarah? I think, not to brag, but I think my future's bright. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna be amazing because like I said, I've been through some not so great things. And right now my new company, I'm really enjoying myself. I think there's loads of potential here and a little bit of positive environment. Like Zoe was saying, they really believe in me and that's great. And um, I think by the fact that I'm really passionate about what I do and this industry, and I'm quite hardworking, I believe, and resilient. Um, that and th that technology 
has this like never ending potential that the future is is bright it's really exciting so as long as i keep that mindset of i can do it i will do it that's what i believe anyway congratulations so it's just you know you guys are so inspiring um i, I really appreciate your participating in this i love these opportunities that you guys have i think it's so exciting to be you know working in a startup and working in you know space exploration i mean this is really um you know top top kinds of opportunities and you guys have obviously worked really hard for this and you've got your family and your friends to thank as well as um as well as your colleagues and but mainly your own sort of hard work getting there so i really want to applaud you guys for that it's really super exciting to see people at the beginning of their career like this um so just to wrap up um could we get the slides back So, um, so we've talked to lots and lots of people about this, and we have this um, theory that we've kind of pulled together on the basis of discussions, just like the discussion you just had with young, young, younger girls and with young women, of the three pillars that we think that people need um, to be encouraged to work in um, tech, be that software engineering or be that sort of other kinds of engineering. Um, the first thing is a support network. And as we heard different people say, you know, it's important that people feel like they can find friends. Do they know people who are interested in this? Can they make friends in this environment? Um, can they get people to join them? If they don't know people going in, are they going to be able to go in and find friends or bring their friends along? Is there somebody they admire in there? Do people in this place believe in them? And I thought it was really interesting in talking to Sauda and Zoe in particular, talking about sort of this idea of having this kind of abstract role model and people who are, you know, kind of, you know, very strong leaders, um, but people who are kind of far away was less important than having somebody close to you, whether that's somebody in your friends and family support network or a boss or a team member who really believes you, and believes in you and really is ready to support you along the way. And then the other thing is this idea of, uh, of finding a passion, so finding something you really enjoy um, and, and getting excited about it um, and discovering these things and that sometimes finding the things that you don't enjoy is as important as the things that you do enjoy in finding that and really getting your hands dirty and just trying things out and figuring out what you like. And this other pillar, which is opportunity um, and passion and opportunity, I've put this circle because these are, it's iterative, you know, figuring out what your passion is, is partly based on opportunities and what your opportunities are, are partly based on finding your passions. So you need an opportunity to put your passion into practice. Um, but we also need to give people these opportunities at a time when they can take them. We need to get it because taking these opportunities is a risk. And so if we can give people these opportunities early enough. So, for example, in the case of Sauda, she was taking uh, she was taking a risk when she tried her computer science um, GCSE. Um, and she did that at a time when she could still opt into that. But but, um, you know, sometimes people have an opportunity to check out tech um, later in their academic career. Um, and it's really too late for them to go down that path or they feel like it's too late to go down that path because they would have to abandon another path. And so, you know, it's really important to give girls and young women plenty of opportunities to get hands on and explore this stuff early enough that they can have that iterative loop between their passion and their opportunity. And so, um, you know, we talk to a lot of people. We talk to corporates and governments and lots of different kinds of people about how to support um, girls and young women getting into tech. And this is the kind of framework that we, we really think about. How do you how do you get girls and young women to feel like this is a place where they're going to make friends? It's going to be fun. There is a social aspect. They're not going to be alone. There's lots of different roles. It's not only programming. There's lots of different roles that you can get involved in. How do you help them discover that passion and do something fun? How do you get them to get hands on, try a project, figure out if they like it, um, and, and really get into that iterative loop and, and feel really empowered um, to, to, you know, own that thing that they like and then really take some risks on those opportunities. So those are kind of the, the three pillars that we found about um, encouraging girls and women in tech and how we, uh, how we approach that. So, um, so that's coming to the end. I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to pitch in with. No, yeah, just to, yeah, just to reiterate just that importance of finding collaborative opportunities to discover passion that has low risk, uh, low risk of discovery, you know, the ability to just try things out and to do it earlier enough in your sort of education or career where 
those possibilities seem real that you can still grasp onto them. Um, so yeah, just let's let's just keep building those support networks and keep giving each other as women in tech and the next generation those opportunities to support each other and discover our passions and, and build on them. Fantastic. Great. Well, that wraps us up. Thanks so much to especially um, Sauda and Zoe for coming and sharing your experience. Um, we don't always have access as uh, you know professional women in tech. We don't always have access to people who are um, in their study paths or just recently you know starting their careers after finishing their study paths. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. It's super valuable, um, and we you know applaud you and we really look forward to following um, what your very very bright futures hold for you. So I hope you have. Uh, you know, all, all of these dreams and stuff that are just going to become realities for you. So good luck in all that as well. So thank you very much uh, for letting us do this panel today. And I hope it was interesting. And um, if you uh, wanted to reach out to us, we're FireTech. It's fire-tech.com. Um, and we're happy to speak to people who are also excited about getting women and girls um, interested in tech. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.